Hello everybody. In this class, I'm going to talk to you about value at risk through Monte Carlo simulations. We will learn about the geometry Brownian motion, which is a very key idea in many financial theories. We'll also do a Monte Carlo simulation based on the geometric Brownian motion. And finally, we will measure the value at risk based on this simulation. So what is the Monte Carlo value at risk? The Monte Carlo value at risk basically enables us to simulate stock prices over a horizon. The horizon here may be a year or half a year or any other period and measure the value at risk. The value at risk is simply the maximum loss that you can incur over, over a horizon expressed at a confidence level, say 95% value at risk or 99% value at risk. So it is a dollar amount which represents the maximum loss which you can incur over a period, let's say a year. So using the Monte Carlo method, if you could simulate a hundred prices and arrange them in ascending order, the value at risk would be nothing but the current price minus the fifth price. And so the current price minus the fifth price when prices are arranged in ascending order will be our measure of value at risk. So if this were the distribution of stock prices and if the red line is the current stock price and if this is the fifth percentile stock price then the difference between them will be the value at risk. So just again to recap the 95% value at risk is simply the current stock price minus the fifth percentile stock price. Now to go ahead and do the Monte Carlo simulation we need to get a little bit of background about the ETO process for stock prices. The ETO process is also incidentally known as the geometric Brownian motion. So what is the geometric Brownian motion? In continuous time the process is given by this equation ds by s is equal to mu dt plus sigma dz or in other words we can take the s on the left side up to the right side and write it as ds is equal to mu s dt plus sigma s dz where dz is equal to epsilon into root of delta t. So what is ds by s? ds by s is nothing but the, the stock return because it's simply nothing but the change in the stock price ds by s, the stock price. So in other words, it is the stock return and what we are saying is that the stock return is a function of two things, mu and sigma, where mu is the expected return and sigma is the volatility. What is the epsilon term? In the third equation, the epsilon is simply a normal random number. In other words, it's a z value that is randomly picked up from a standard normal distribution n0, 1. Now in discrete time, the ETO process is expressed by this equation. Delta s is equal to mu s delta t plus sigma s epsilon into root of delta t. So from the ETO process, if we need to simulate the stock prices, then the equation is this. The stock price at time t plus delta t is equal to the stock price at time t plus the change in the stock price. So using this equation, we are going to actually do a Monte Carlo simulation and simulate stock prices and finally use that simulation, the results of the simulation to measure the value at risk. So what's the Monte Carlo simulation? So let's actually do a Monte Carlo simulation assuming that the stock price is currently 50, it has a mean return of 10% and a standard deviation of 20%. Now what this amounts to saying is that after one year, the stock return will have a probability distribution of phi 10, 20, where phi mu, sigma is a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So that is what the Monte Carlo simulation 
is actually going to involve we are going to simulate stock returns from this normal distribution and then use that to construct the stock prices and measure the value at risk from the simulated stock prices so that is what the Monte Carlo simulation is simulate values from the above distribution for t steps and n parts so we're going to divide the whole time into many smaller time steps and we're going to do a number of simulations we're going to use n parts to do the simulation so let's actually go to Microsoft Excel and do the simulation now here is my spreadsheet and I'm going to show you how to simulate stock prices over let's say the next one year so I'm going to assume T is equal to 1 here and I'm going to break that one year down to 50 steps I'm going to take 20 parts to do the simulation I will start with a stock price of 100 I will assume the expected return on the stock to be 10% or 0.1 and the Sigma to be 0.3 or 30% now given these parameters I have a macro out here which is actually going to do the simulation and return the results of it back to me here so let me just go ahead and click simulate and see what happens so there we are here we have 20 GBM paths now note that each of the path is in a different color here the 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 pink path the last path over here where my cursor is that's the path which gives me the least stock price so if I have 20 stock prices the path that represents the fifth percentile stock price here is this pink path how am I going to use this information let me return to the presentation and so what's the value at risk here it's the maximum dollar loss over the horizon expressed at a confidence level so here I have 20 parts if I sort the prices in ascending order I have this distribution of prices remember that in reality I'm not going to have 20 prices I will probably have 20,000 stock prices in the actual Monte Carlo simulation in reality but assuming that right now sticking with our example we had 20 stock prices if this is the current stock price and this is the fifth percentile stock price in our case it's the least stock price because we have 1 by 20 which is the 5 percentile number and so the difference between them is the value at risk once again to recap what's the 95 percent value at risk is the current stock price minus the fifth percentile stock price so you simulate 10,000 stock prices 5 percent of 10,000 is 500 so if you arrange stock prices in ascending order the 500 stock price when subtracted from the current stock price would give us our value at risk measure that's all in this class if there are any questions and answers I'd be glad to take them thank you for watching